Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button and keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are after market close on Tuesday, August 22nd. We're going to take a look at Mullen Automotive today. Now, I put out a couple of polls, one on YouTube, one on Twitter, and asked uh, what ticker folks wanted me to cover. Uh, <laughs> Mullen really ran away with the Twitter poll, um, and so we will do that one first today. And before we get into the chart, I just want to mention that this is going to be a chart analysis. I know that there's a whole other realm of information that's out there and um, sort of speculation and emotions are high, it appears on Twitter. And I tried to dig into it a little bit and quickly realized that uh, this would be really underserved by just a couple of hours that I had to look into it before making this video. And it's going to take me a few days to dig through stuff that people have been putting together for weeks and months. So this is my info request. If anyone has good links to info that you think is really relevant to all the accusations, that's the word, all the accusations that are out there. I know there's stuff about the CEO, um, all uh, some other info about a warehouse or a factory or, or something. But in any case, you know, it was me just sort of like trying to decipher, scrolling through Twitter, what was real and what was clickbait and what was hype and what was not. So um, if folks could point me in the comments, could comment with, with some uh, links or some things that I could even search on Reddit or Twitter or what have you, um, I would appreciate it. And that way I can sort of try to, I guess, tighten the scope of, of what it is that I'm looking for. And then maybe I can sort of make a video on that in the future, but this will just be a chart analysis. So sorry it took me a full two minutes to get through that, but let's go through the chart and, uh, and then we'll leave it at that for this video. Now, this is the three minute which I was actually live charting today. So if you missed that, you can see on my channel, live charting from today. And I started charting it on the three minute when we were breaking out of this downtrend here. And basically I kept checking back on it because I said, you know, it's interesting to put in this 47.51 because back here, uh, that's where this wick dipped down to. It's hard to tell because that volume bar is also very, very, uh, overlapping of the wick, but then it put it in again here, and then it did a little bit of a flag and broke that downtrend. And I thought, hmm, this could be interesting. And so, if you go back and look at that in real time before the price action was here, I put this in and I said, you know, this will be uh, an important level for it to to break through if it's going to maneuver itself upward. And then this level will get sticky. And then this one, I said, will be very sticky because you have all of this price action throughout the day where it tried to hold this floor several times and it did so until it gave way. And so what happened after it broke that? It's made its way through here pretty easily, but then it came down and retested it. Sounds cool. Um, and then it got really stuck here as uh, one would imagine. And then it dipped below, pushed off, came back and it, I didn't draw the box far enough, but as you see, it made another attempt toward this level and fell short and pushed off and then really sold off in the close back, even dipping under that 47.51. So that live charting in that intraday, um, you know, I think that that the levels that we put in there really held up well. And, and I was happy with how that played out and how we called it on the live stream. Um, I'll be doing more of those if folks are interested. So just make sure you have your notifications on um, and I will try to post it. I only posted this one like 15 minutes before I went live or something because I was just trying to figure out the streaming platform. Um, but I'll try to post them with more time, uh, more time in advance uh, in the future. So on the daily, Mullen's still just really stuck really, really stuck under this downtrend that kicked off around mid-July and, you know, just moving further and further away, having a hard time sort of mustering anything to, to even try to maneuver itself to make an attempt. You know, it would have to, I guess, move up about four, 30, 40 cents or so um, to, to make a run at this and, and try to breach this downtrend level. So, quite a significant percentage change. 
Um, so maybe I can do it. I don't know. But that to me is the most critical component at the moment. Um, you know, if we zoom back in here, maybe take a look at the 10 minute and pull in from uh, the couple of days isn't going to be that helpful. So let's just toss in a couple of levels here. It's not a, a lot of price action, obviously. So I will take these with a bit of a grain of salt because these may shift. But the levels that seem to be sort of critical here is 61.09. And I know that's above where we are now. Um, and then 77.82. So if it does make a run toward that downtrend, those are the levels that I would look for um, to see if it's going to try to put anything uh, anything in and really build uh, some support over those levels. Um, 47, 47, you know, about where we were looking today at that uh, that double bottom, but uh, close to where it, it finished off today. We'll put that level in there as well, just to kind of try to keep track. Um, yeah, this is such a crazy chart. Um, so I was trying to see if we could get back to any sort of useful levels, but but not so much. Um, so we'll flip over to think or swim <clears throat> and see what's happening on there. We'll take a look at the indicators and the channel setup and that sort of thing. So this gets really useless if we zoom out to uh, like the daily for sure. Uh, I can try again if we want to do that for fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> see, it's just, it's so flat because the price is so low and uh, it's kind of chopping around in the long run. So let's see what our, let's see if the hour time frame. Okay, so this gives us something. So on the hour time frame, just realize this is on the daily, this is on the hour. Now hour, this has fallen well below the lower bound of the channel. Um, and we see it did, you know, it had a similar motion here, right, where it uh, just kind of moved sideways back into the channel. Now, this one, it's not as strong of an initial dip as this huge candle here, um, but it's more successive. So it's not yet kind of moving sideways yet and trying to work itself back into the channel that way, sort of like backdoor its way into the channel. Uh, so, you know, it's really just caught strongly on this downtrend at the moment very oversold as well. What's this RSI reading? I don't even know. It's like not not coming up here for some reason. Um, but this is very low, whatever this is, 20-ish. Um, and TTM squeeze indica indicator right now is showing that the bearish momentum is continuing to pick up at the moment. Now the trigger was way back here. And then when it fired, it had several hours of trading before it really made its move. And you know, then it had this sort of kicked off the larger move down and then it just sort of trickled its way into um, continuing to bleed out the rest of the day. But again, on the hourly, it's appearing that it's still picking up some bearish momentum. That said, you know, will it be able to do sort of what it did here where it fell out of the bottom, worked its way back into the channel and then made an attempt at the mid range of the channel? That's usually what I look for when anything moves out of the bottom or out of the top that I'm waiting for it to revert back to the mid-range, that blue-ish line in the channel. Now, does it always happen? Definitely not. You can see so right here. Came through, fell out of the channel, spent uh, out of market hours, uh, out of the channel, worked its way back in, and didn't really make any attempt at that mid midline. It, it didn't really get close. Barely got any action back in the channel and then really shoved back off. And then here it sort of made an attempt. But you know, that's just to say, yes, I do sort of look for it to move back into the channel, but it can make significant moves in whatever direction it's currently going for MULN. Obviously, it's moving down um, before it can even structure itself back into the channel to make an attempt at that mid range. So I don't know which way it's going to it's going to turn here, but these are the levels that I'm looking at. That's where it sits in the channel. Squeeze is showing increasing momentum still on the bears RSI flipping up a little bit toward the end of the day there, but you know, it's obviously just very oversold at the moment. Um, but depending on what all this other stuff is, that's going on, that might not really matter. Like just cause something is overbought or oversold doesn't mean that it can't get more overbought and can't get more oversold. Like that can continue to take place. Um, it's not, it's not a hard and fast rule that oh, it's oversold. Now it has to go up. So 
Now, hopefully that's obvious, but just to point that out. All right, folks, I hope your trading week is off to a good start. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.